In the last video, we defined the flux of a vector field as a surface integral of the vector field over a particular surface and defined the normal to that surface to be able to get only the component of the vector field that was flowing directly out of the surface. From there, we defined the divergence of a vector field as the volume density of outward flux from a small volume delta tau about a particular point. In this video, we're going to uh, come up with an algorithm of sorts to be able to calculate divergence more efficiently than with this equation over here. And for simplicity, we're going to choose a Cartesian coordinate system, but the argument can be generalized to cylindrical, spherical, or other coordinate systems in general. So we're going to consider a vector field V that has components Vx in the i hat direction, Vy in the j hat direction, and V said in the k hat direction. And we want to calculate the divergence of this vector field over a small uh, rectangular element. So we have some very small rectangle over here. I'm drawing it a little big just for illustration purposes. We'll call uh, this the x-axis, this the y-axis, and this one the set one. So we still have a right-handed coordinate system. The side lengths of this rectangle, of this parallel pipe pen, are delta x over here, the height is delta y, and the depth is delta z. And so we're going to consider we have a vector field like this. And we want to calculate the divergence. So we need to calculate the flux over every single phase of this parallel pipe. We're going to start by calculating the flux over this phase that we're going to call S1. Which, uh, or actually, let's start with this face over here. So this is S1, and we'll call this one S2. So we're going to take the center of S1 is at coordinates x, y, and z. And we need to define a unit normal vector that measures the outward flux. So by convention, it has to be pointing uh, outside of the surface. So the normal vector will be in this direction. In this case, n hat is in the negative i hat direction for surface one. And then we can set up our integral to calculate the flux. So our surface integral for the flux, this is flux across S1. You have your vector field evaluated at x, y, and z with the dotted with the normal vector to that phase, which is in the negative i hat direction. Mm -hmm.
So B again has the following components. And similarly for Z. So when you take the dot product of V with the normal to the surface, which we said was minus I, you're only left with the X component. I'm just gonna write the surface integral like this, a shorthand. This becomes Vx, that's what And then our surface element is this one over here. So you vary along Z and along Y. So it's dz times dy over s1. And we're going, and there should be a negative over here because of the minus i. Okay, and this is because we dot it with n is minus vx. Okay, we're gonna play a similar trick to what we did with the gradient. So we're gonna say, since s is very small, we're going to treat vx as approximately constant over the surface, s1. So what that means is our surface integral is we can take out the vector field component from the integral because we're supposing that it's roughly constant over our entire surface. And then this integral becomes trivial. It's just the area of our particular face. This is Vx delta y delta z. Okay, so this is the flux of this vector field across the surface S1 over here. For the second surface S2, so the surface over here, the normal vector to that is in the, is over here. So it's in the I hat direction. So for S2, our surface integral becomes Vx once again, because our vector V dotted with I hat only gives the X component. And now the center of this face is, so it's at the same X and Y but the X coordinate has been shifted by Delta X. So the center of phase S2 is at points X plus Delta X, Y, and Z. So that means that our vector field has to be evaluated at X plus Delta X, Y, and Z. Whereas for phase one, our vector field was evaluated at the center of its center coordinates, x, y, and z. Okay, times the surface element, which is dy, dz. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say that vx is approximately constant over s2 if S2 is sufficiently small, so that our surface integral is approximately given by this. Okay, so we were able to take out Vx from our integral because we're supposing that S2 is so small that Vx doesn't vary appreciably over that surface. 
So it's roughly a constant, so we can take it out of the integral. So we had Okay, so we had this quantity over here. The This integral is again easy. It's just the area of that particular phase of the parallel pipette. Which given the dimensions, it's just delta y, delta z. Okay, now if we wanna calculate the total flux that's going through both of these surfaces, we need to add up the contributions from the integral over S1 and the integral over S2. I'm just going to write in shorthand only with the integral sign. So we need for the total flux over both surfaces. So over S1 and S2, you have the, the flux through S1 plus the flux through S2. And this is equal to So this is coming from our flux over S2. And then our flux over S1 was negative V of X, so the X component of our vector field times delta Y delta Z. Again, the negative sign came from the dot product with the normal to that surface, which was in the negative I hat direction. So this is minus V X evaluated X, Y, and Z. And the area element was common to both terms. So you can factor it out as delta Y, delta Z. Now we're going to divide and uh, we're going to add the following term. So we have our usual quantity over here. We're going to divide this by delta x, the length of the side of the parallel pipette along x. So that means that we need to add a delta x over here so we don't change anything in our equation. And we still have our delta y and delta z. This should remind you of the definition of a partial derivative approximately. So in the limit where delta x, delta y, and delta z go to zero, in other words, in the limit where your, the volume of the parallel pipette goes to zero, this quantity is equal to the partial derivative of vx, the x component of your vector field, with respect to x. times uh, we'll call the volume element delta tau, okay? And this is the X component. So we found that the total flux over both surfaces is just equal to the partial derivative of the X component of your vector field with respect to X times the volume uh, 
of uh, the volume enclosed by the surface that we're considering. You can do the same thing for the other surfaces. So you can do the same thing for the surface up here and the surface down here and the surface facing out that way and facing back over there. So just for reference, So we have called this surface on the side S1, the surface on the other side S2. If you call the bottom surface S3 and the top surface S4, then the total flux over both of these surfaces would be the partial derivative of the y component of your vector field with respect to y times the volume element. And then the this face, the forward face, if we call that S5 and the back face over here S6, then the total flux through these two surfaces. So the surface integral over S5 and S6. This will give you, this is approximately, the partial derivative of the Z component of your vector field with respect to Z times the volume element delta tau. So if you were, if you were to put all of this together, so Uh, if you calculate the surface integral over the entire area enclosing this, so remember the little circle around the integral signs is the whole area enclosing your volume delta tau. This is equal to adding up all of the surface integrals that we did. So S1, the surface integral over S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, and S6. And this gives you then, you add up all of the components that we found. And they all had a delta tau over here. Okay, so this was the contribution from the total flux through S1 and S2. This was the total flux through S3 and S4. And this was the total flux through S5 and S6. Now, if you recall, we had defined this quantity, the divergence as the limit as tau goes to zero, one over tau. The surface integral over the entire surface enclosing some volume. So the total flux coming out of that volume. And we ju just found that this gives the sum of these partial derivatives. Times delta tau. So that means that you can cancel this delta tau with a delta tau over here. And it gives you that the divergence of a vector field can be more efficiently computed by adding up these partial derivatives. All right, in other words, the sum of the partial derivatives of each component of the vector field with respect to their uh, respective variables. So 
of x with x, v of y with y, and v of z of z gives you a measure of the volume density of outward flux from a small volume about a point. So in this video, we did it over a small volume delta tau. In the next video, we're going to see how this generalizes to larger volumes, which will consist of uh, adding up the contributions from several small volumes, such as the one we considered in this video.